Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and it is time for another sheet load rewind. I hope you'll stick around, find out what month we're rewinding to today and see the cards that I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I like to stop by each month and rewind back to a previous sheet load just to revisit it and see if we can change it up a little bit. Well, this month we're going to be rewinding back to February 2020. We will be making six cards today from two pieces of 12 by 12 pattern paper and some coordinating card stocks. I will actually be using clear cardstock for my card bases, so we will be switching it up just a little bit from the original supply list and cutting guides. If after watching me create today's video, you want to download the February 2020 sheet load of cards, I will tell you at the end of the video how to do this, and I do have the original videos for February 2020 linked in that description box below. If you enjoy the series and seeing what I create with old sheet loads of cards, I also have the sheet load rewind playlist in the description box. Let's go ahead and take a look at the main supplies I'll be using today. For my pattern papers, I chose two 12 by 12s from Cardabella's Flora Number no. 3 line. I just like the florals on this and then the blue and white polka dotted paper to go with it. For my sentiments, I'm actually going to be using a stamp set that I designed and is now available for pre-order. I will tell you more about this as I do the process and let you know how you can get it and save if you order before the 28th. I will be using a few different sentiments from this set for my final cards. I thought that the Gina K Designs Dusty Rose ink would go well with the pinks in the floral paper. And then for a little extra accent, I got out this doily die from Paper Tray Ink. As I add any more products or tools later on during the process, I will be sure to let you know. But if I do leave you with any questions, as always, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Before we get to that process, I did want to stop by with a channel member shout out. I would like to say thank you and welcome back to Paper Trimmer Level Membership to Created to Bless. I appreciate your support. If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below. Now while I'm talking about channel members, I do just want to give a special shout out to all of you who support me each month. Your support keeps Sheetload free for all subscribers and me here crafting. Well, today's process video got off to a bang up start. I realized after I cut down my pattern papers that I did not have my camera on. I just followed the cutting guide on the printable and don't forget that you can see that original process video. It is linked in the description box below so you can see exactly how I did that. When I make clear cards, I like to hide the message inside somehow. For today's cards, I'm actually going to be turning the mat for the smaller piece of pattern paper into its own folded card. Now to do this, I brought in three pieces of white cardstock and I'm going to cut them down until I get six pieces that are three and a quarter inches wide by nine inches tall. Then I can fold each of these in half and you'll see here that that little pattern paper will fit right on the front. I kept cutting and folding the white cardstock until I had six little mini cards. 
Next, I want you to see how I cut and fold my clear card bases, just to show you that it can be done with a regular trimmer and your hands. Now, once you put a crisp crease on the top, these will stand up. If you want to know more about my clear card bases, I do have a Q&A video linked in the description box below. I have really been trying lately to use up scraps of paper while I have it out and to decorate the cards I'm creating. Well, it turns out that this doily die fit those scraps perfectly, so I cut three from each pattern paper to decorate my card front later. Now it's time to stamp the sentiments. Off camera, I cut down some scraps of white cardstock, and this was just left over from making the little inner cards. I will be using a stamp block and that ink for the sentiments. The three that I chose to use for today's cards are Hello Friend, Thinking of You, and Just a Note. What I'm gonna do is stamp two of each sentiment for six total cards. Now, while I work on this, I thought it would be a great time to tell you about my Abstract Botanicals bundle. This bundle is now available for pre-order, and pre-ordering is the only way to guarantee that you can get a bundle. It is made up of a 6x8 stamp set and a coordinating two-pack of stencils. You'll see up on screen now I'm sharing some close-up looks of what the product looks like. And also available now is an exclusive class that you can add on. Here's a little peek at the cards we're going to create. And again, in that pre-order video I have linked below, I do go over this in more detail. Pre-orders are open through February 28th, and the order will be placed on March 1st for shipping at the end of March. Now, if you do order before the 28th, up on screen now is a special discount code that you can use to save 15%. Do make sure to add this at the time of checkout. It cannot be fixed later on. With that discount, if you do a pre-order, it is basically going to pay for the class, which does come with a bonus SVG file, so you can use it for die-cut botanicals. After I had all of my sentiment stamped, off screen I trimmed them down using my little Fiskars photo trimmer and then I punched each end with this fishtail punch. Now we're going to work on the focal points. As you can see from the printable the sketch, the sentiment is off to the left. Now, if you didn't know this before, the printable is actually at 100%. So you can always play around with your pattern papers or your embellishments to kind of see how it will look before you commit it to a card front. I did decide that I want my sentiment to go a little bit to the left on the doily. So what I'm going to do is start putting those together. I added some adhesive to the back left of the fishtail piece and I placed that onto the doily and depending on how wide the sentiment was, depended on how far into the doily I would place that. Next, I brought in those smaller pieces of pattern paper and added one to the front center of each of the inner cards. After the little cards were all done, I started to work on the larger one. So I brought in the clear card bases and I added the largest piece of pattern paper to the inside center of the cards. The next step was to put these two cards together. So adhesive got added to the back of the miniature card and then it got added to the opposite piece of pattern paper that was on the inside. You'll see here now my message will be able to be hidden from the front later on. At this point is when I also brought in my bone folder and made a nice crisp crease on the top so they would stand up nicely later on. I paired up the doilies with card bases. What I did was whatever pattern paper was in the back is the pattern that I would use for the doily on that card. After adding adhesive to the back of the doily and the sentiment piece, I centered it so about the same amount of the doily and the fishtail banner would hang off on the left and right edges. 
I continued to add these focal points until all six cards had a sentiment and a doily. To finish the cards off, you know that I want to add a little bit of bling. So I brought in my Bubble Bath Dual Color Pearl Mix from Cat Scrappiness. These are little flat back pearls that have kind of an iridescent pink and blue, which I thought went well with these cards. I added three little dots of glue to the front of each card. I did let that get tacky for just a little bit, and then I placed a pearl onto each one. I did set these to the side to dry while I took a little break and after they had about 30 minutes to dry, even if the glue had kind of ran out from the back of the pearl, it was clear. Here are some close up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed this little rewind to February 2020. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now I'll tell you how to download the printable. As always, the sheet load of cards printables are free to subscribers of my channel. I don't make you email me proof or sign up for a mailing list. We do just go on the honor system here. So please make sure that you've already clicked on that subscribe button below if you haven't already and are going to use the printable. You will find the link at the very bottom of my description box below. Right underneath it, it will say watch video for password, but your password is just watching the video this far to find out where the link is. You can open it and view it on screen and use it from there, or you can download it to your device and print it off. That is completely up to you. I hope you have lots of fun rewinding back to February 2020, and until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above, and if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.